So this is my deck breakfast of um, June the 3rd at 10.37. And Amphred's joining. Yeah. She's very excited. She's still a little bit wet. I gave um, dogs baths today. And she smells good. So I'm just having pea soup, sprouted pea soup, smoky, and um, it's yum. And then I'm having probably one, maybe two. I've made two toasted just to, just in case I want to. Um, and then I'm gonna clean up this deck because there's um, dried up flowers from the lilacs. So I'll sweep that up and um, yeah, it'll be good. Make the deck beautiful again because it's going to be a sunny week. You may as well enjoy it. I just got back from the grocery store and I forgot. I was going to give the kids treats when I got back, but I forgot. Um, and I got some cilantro because I eat quite a lot of that and um, it's a, if it's a sunny week it's a good week for Bammy so I'll be eating a lot of that mm. and um, mm, red onions were on sale for two dollars for a three pound bag And I've been going through a lot of those, so. And I got the limit of four. What a beautiful morning. I only have my leg give out um, once today so far. And that was when, um, just as I got out of the car, I was being too cavalier about how I was doing it because I was feeling pretty good this morning. I mean, I feel pressure in my back, but um, it's not bad. I feel a little bit right here, a little bit here, a little bit here, but it's not bad. It's uh, I can I can get work done with this, so I'm fine. Work like cleaning dogs. Mm -hmm. oh, I should have cleaned your ear. You have something on your ear. That's okay. And I um, got the house swept up and stuff like that this morning. And well, now I'm doing laundry. Because I like to combine the dog washing with the floor washing because it just works out that way. And so then I put the laundry spread all over the floor to be kind of like the blankets and stuff to be towels for little people who like to roll roll off the, the wet fur into the towels. Are you best dog ever? Yeah, you are. Your best dog ever.
you're a very happy dog right now. You're being really nice and relaxed. I appreciate that. So this dress is a little bit short. I forgot to bring my Omega 3 and stuff out, but I'll I'll take it. Um it's it's I'm wearing a bikini underneath, so it's okay. But um I saw it at the thrift store when they were having that bag sale of clothing. Um fill a bag for I think it was twenty five dollars or something like that. Anyway, so I I put it in a bag because I thought it looks about the right around for me but it's a size large um, 10 in brackets gap kids it's gap kids size 10 large so uh, but it's just a little bit too too tall up here I wish I could put the straps down but they're not made that way it looks like they are. It looks like you tie them up, so it looks like I'd be able to untie them and make this lower down, and then my skirt would be lower down, but nope. It's just a, a normal strap with some a little bow sewed on to the top, so kids don't have to learn how to tie a bow um, at age 10. I remember the first time I learned how to tie a bow. My cousin Darren taught me how. He died earlier this year. I didn't hear about it until the day of the funeral. It's not like I could make it. But uh, he was like a brother to me. He lived with us for a time when I was little. But he taught me because um, to go to kindergarten I had to wear shoes and I hadn't been wearing shoes I've been running around barefoot all over the farm I didn't know a thing about tying shoes so everyone else would so, some other kids said in kindergarten they didn't know how to tie shoes either and so the um, kindergarten teachers they would have to tie our shoes, the ones that didn't know. And so there wasn't very many teachers and there were more kids and we missed out on a lot of our outside time, our research test time, um, than uh, having to wait to get our shoes tied, right? So Darren taught me how to tie my shoes. And um, my mom had been trying to teach me how to tie shoes the normal way. And then uh, but Darren, he was he was sharp, and he realized that that was very complicated to learn. So he taught me the bunny ears way, and I I learned that right away. It was Mum was driving the car, and Darren was in the front seat, and I I was I think on the floor on the front seat um, passenger, and uh, Darren was teaching me how to tie my shoes. So. And that was just in between uh, our farm and Grandma's farm, and, which was not very far away. So I learned very fast once somebody showed me how to do it. So Darren was a very good teacher for tying my shoes. And then I was able to tie my shoes from there on in. And um, I don't know who taught me how to use do the, the other way of tying one shoes, but eventually I picked that up. That was fine. But I'm very thankful to Darren for many things. Darren was a very good big brother.
Darren had played with us. My parents didn't really play with us. Maybe a few times. Like, uh, oh, I could probably count on my hand how many times I played with us. So it was mostly dad. And it was things like once he taught me how to color in my coloring book wrong. So that was her. Anna Frit, don't eat my plants. So he did. It was a Fred Flintstone coloring book. And uh, he did Fred Flintstone's face green and this and that. And, and everything was just the wrong colors. And I was like, it's wrong. And, and he said, why? You know, it's not wrong. <coughs> and that was very freeing. So then I could do whatever I wanted with coloring. Another time Dad played with us, um, he taught us how to play kick the can, which he, it was like hide and seek, but a little bit different. You had to kick a can. Well, I couldn't teach anybody now because I don't really remember, and I didn't really re understand the point of the can in the first place. And my mom did read to us a few times, like, um, it was mostly once we got a bit older that she was reading to us. And I really benefited from it, like, um, I think when I was nine especially, she was, and eight, she was reading a lot to us then. Um, bedtime stories, it was almost, almost every night. And I'd follow along. And I think that's why she was doing it, because she knew I was following along, right? But when we were little, she didn't read to us very much. Um, she says, Sesame Street taught me how to read. <laughs> I don't know, I guess it taught me a few things. When I spoke when I was little, I spoke with a British accent. Mm, I suppose that faded once I got to school. I don't really remember when it faded. But, um, and my mom attributes that to Sesame Street too. She thinks it must have been a New York kind of accent or something. But I don't think so. I attribute it more to Grandpa with the glasses, who, like my, um, British grandpa, but I don't even remember him. I remember one time when I was little, uh, like really little, I must have been crawling because I remember being really low down and looking up and he was sitting in a chair. It was kind of hard to look up because it was bright, bright looking up, but it would have been a light bulb up head. But, um, Apparently, I really, I was really fond of, of Grandpa with the glasses. I don't really remember, but I do remember him smiling at me. And I could probably draw a picture of him now, I remember. <laughs> been so lucky. I've had so many people that have cared about me in my life. And Anifred's just one of them. Right, Anifred? 
and if it's very good to cuddle with in bed because she likes to um, wake up and just start kissing all of a sudden. <laughs> and then I'll tell her that she's the best dog ever because she's so good and she's so smart. And she loves to hear that. And then she'll roll over so I can rub her tummy. Well, I better get to work.